Hey there. Have you ever felt like you're drowning in a sea of configuration files, struggling to maintain consistency and security across your AWS infrastructure? Well, today we're diving into the world of GitOps. It's a game-changing approach that's gonna revolutionize the way you manage your cloud environments. Imagine this scenario. You're responsible for maintaining a complex network infrastructure spanning multiple AWS regions and accounts, keeping track of all the configurations, ensuring compliance, and maintaining a consistent security posture can quickly become a nightmare. Well, that's where GitOps comes in, offering a streamlined and secure approach to infrastructure automation and management. I'm Brandon Carroll, your cloud security guy here, and in this video, I'm gonna guide you through the process of GitOps and its powerful impact on network security and compliance. Well, today we're gonna to dive deep into GitOps, an approach that combines the power of Git with infrastructure as code and continuous delivery pipelines. We'll explore how GitOps can help you automate your network configurations, enforce security policies, and maintain a consistent and compliant infrastructure across your AWS environments. So buckle up and let's get this party started. First, let's talk about the key problems GitOps helps address. You see, traditional infrastructure management often involves manual processes, complex scripts, and ad hoc changes, leading to configuration drift, inconsistencies, and security vulnerabilities. On the other hand, with GitOps, you can automate your infrastructure provisioning, enforce version control, and maintain a consistent security posture across your AWS environments. Now, one of the big challenges in infrastructure management is configuration drift. Now, over time, your resources begin to deviate from their desired state, and that can lead to security risks and compliance issues. Well, GitOps solves this problem by treating your infrastructure as code versioned in Git and automatically reconciling any deviations. Compliance and auditing are also pretty big concerns, especially in regulated industries. GitOps provides a detailed audit trail of all changes, making it easier to verify compliance and investigate any issues that pop up unexpectedly. Now, security scanning and policy enforcement are also essential for maintaining your organization's security posture. With GitOps, you can integrate security scanning tools, many of them being open source into your pipeline. Now, by doing this, you can make sure that your infrastructure is following your organization's security policies before deployment. Next up is automated rollbacks and recovery. This is another major benefit of GitOps. If a deployment fails or introduces issues, GitOps allows you to quickly roll back to a known good state, minimizing downtime and maintaining a consistent infrastructure. And finally, GitOps promotes the concept of immutable infrastructure, where resources are replaced rather than modified. This approach reduces the risk of configuration drift and makes sure your infrastructure stays in a known, secure state. Well, now that we've covered all the key problems that GitOps solves, let's talk about the GitOps methodology itself. So GitOps is a set of principles and practices that apply Git principles to infrastructure automation and management. Now, just like developers use Git for version control and collaboration on code, GitOps allows you to treat your infrastructure as code and manage it using Git repositories. The main idea behind GitOps is to have a single source of truth for your infrastructure. And that's stored in a Git repository. Now, this repository serves as the declarative description of your desired infrastructure state. Any changes to the infrastructure has to go through a pull request process, giving visibility to the change, time to review it, and necessary approvals before being applied. In contrast to the traditional mindset of manually managing infrastructure, GitOps promotes a developer-centric approach. Infrastructure changes are treated just like software code changes. This shift in mindset brings the benefits of version control, collaboration, and automated testing to infrastructure management. Are you starting to see the benefits of adopting GitOps for your infrastructure? If so, 
Let's take a look at the key components of a GitOps stack and how they work together. Now at the center of a GitOps stack is a Git repository. This could be AWS Code Commit, Amazon Code Catalyst, GitHub, GitLab, and the list goes on. These serve as the single source of truth for your infrastructure configuration. The repository contains your infrastructure as code, or IAC, files, written in languages like Terraform or CloudFormation. Next, you'll need a continuous integration and continuous delivery, or CICD, platform, like AWS Code Pipeline and, and CodeBuild. This will automate the deployment process. These services work together with your Git repo and automatically build, test, and deploy your infrastructure whenever changes are pushed. Okay, now to make sure you're hitting all the security and compliance buttons, you can integrate different security scanning tools and policy enforcement mechanisms into your GitOps pipeline. For example, you can use AWS config rules to validate your infrastructure configurations against your organization's security policies before you deploy. So we've talked about a lot so far. So why don't we walk through an example GitOps pipeline architecture? Okay, it's time for our demo. What we're gonna do is walk through the process of setting up a GitOps pipeline so that we can manage our infrastructure. Let's have a look at GitOps in action. We're gonna do this in the AWS console. So first, let's navigate to code pipeline and create a new pipeline. We'll give it a name, and we'll notice that it also creates a service rule for us. And just looking under advanced settings, notice that we're leaving the artifact store at the default settings, which means it'll create an S3 bucket for us to store those artifacts. On the next page, we select the source where our code comes from. In this case, we're selecting GitHub, and we're gonna connect to GitHub. I've done this in my account once before, but what we wanna do is create a new connection. It gives us an option to set a name and install a new app or a connector to GitHub. This lets me select the account I wanna access and authenticate to it. I'll scroll to the bottom and select the repo that my AWS account will have access to. Now back in the AWS console, I can select the repo and the branch that I wanna watch. And I'll change the trigger to not use a filter, but you can adjust this if you wanna start your pipeline based on a certain filter. Next, we're gonna select code build as our build provider. And because I don't have a project already, I need to create one. I'll give the code build project a name. I'm gonna leave the environment set to the default settings where it'll be an on-demand instance on EC2. And notice it will also create a role for me. Now under additional configuration, I'll change the compute settings to something with a little more power. And a little further down, I'll tell the project to use a build spec file. Now the build spec file is a YAML file that has the instructions on how the project will work when it runs. This build spec file is also in my repo and it'll become part of the artifacts. Now going back to the configuration, we make sure that logging is enabled. And now we see our project is selected in our pipeline configuration. But I'll scroll down and I'll create the pipeline. Okay, we're not done yet. We need to now go into IAM and adjust some permissions Let's go add that to our current policy. Okay, now with the right permissions in place, let's commit our code to the repo. We do that, and now we can see our pipeline's running. And for reference, it did already run, but it failed because there was no code there yet. But this time, notice that we have the source that's completed and the code build project is running. Now this takes a bit of time and we can see it run from two different places. One, right here from code pipeline and two, from the code build project. Now we can speed things up a bit here and we can see that the project completed. Now if we go back to our dev account, 
we have a CloudFormation template that successfully implemented my AWS network firewall and the supporting infrastructure. With a bit of modification, we can now update our Circata rules in code, commit that code to the repo, and watch the test take place and the deployment happen for us automatically. Pretty cool, right? So that demo really showcased GitOps in action. So in this video, we've explored GitOps and how it can change the way you manage your AWS infrastructure. We discussed the challenges of traditional configuration management and how GitOps addresses them by combining Git principles, infrastructure as code, and continuous delivery pipelines. We talked about the key problems GitOps solves for network security and compliance, which include configuration drift, auditing challenges, and automated rollbacks. We also walked through the components of a GitOps stack and showed you a lot in the demo from setting up the code pipeline and code build project, connecting to our repo, adjusting permissions, and seeing an automated infrastructure deployment. If you wanna get even deeper into GitOps and learn more about securing your AWS infrastructure, be sure to check out our Securing the Cloud newsletter and follow my TikTok channel, The Cloud Security Guy, uh, where I give quick tips and updates. Also be sure to check out our technical blogs on community.aws, as well as other videos right here on the AWS Developers YouTube channel. Stay tuned for more videos where we cover advanced topics and real world use cases. If you like this video and want more hands-on technical content, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy labbing.